According to the National Federation of the Blind, there are 1.3 million blind people in the United States, 42 million around the world. 42 million people who from the time of birth, most likely, have not been able to see. They've not seen the beauty of a sunrise or a sunset. They've not seen the beauty of the vast array of flowers that are in one bouquet. They've not seen the beauty of an infant or someone who's lived to old age. From the time that they were born, they haven't been able to see. Now many of us, all of us here, can see to some degree, or we have been able to see. 25 million approximately in the United States of people are losing their vision though in some way or another, whether it's glaucoma or cataracts or diabetes related diseases. And I imagine that those who are losing their vision, those who have never been able to see, cry out, like that blind beggar, Lord, I want to see. Lord, I want to see. The simple phrase that that beggar said to Jesus. When Jesus asked the man, what do you want? He said, Lord, I want to see. So simple. Something we take for granted every single day. The fact that we can see. The fact that we don't have to have someone take us places. Something we take for granted. Lord, I want to see. Now, as beautiful as sight is, and as wonderful as vision is a gift of God, that's not why Luke included this story in his gospel. In fact, Jesus sums it up for us really handily. Sometimes we have trouble knowing where Jesus is going, why something is included in the gospel. But today, we have it very clearly written. We can see exactly what was in mind when Jesus said, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. The man, before he'd ever met Jesus, before he'd had the opportunity to even speak to Jesus, he knew who he was. Did you catch what he called Jesus as as he was coming down the road? Son of David. Son of David. A name that was used from the Old Testament that emphasized one of Jesus' three offices, prophet, priest, and king. He recognized that Jesus was the Savior that had been promised. The Messiah that was to come. See, faith does not require sight. Faith is something that we have whether or not we can see. That blind man knew his Savior before he could ever lay his eyes on him. Faith is a gift from the Holy Spirit. Faith is a gift we receive through the waters of holy baptism. Faith is a gift that is strengthened in Holy Communion. Faith faith is something that the Holy Spirit works in us each day when we pray, when we study Scripture. Faith is a free gift that we're each blessed with. But sometimes we want to see our Savior. We want to see Him. We want to see our Savior come into this world. We want to see Him ride in Ride in in a blaze of glory, on a trusty steed, with his sword drawn, fighting the injustice of this world. We want to see a Savior who comes into our world, who comes in and defeats the wickedness, who defeats all that is evil around us. We want to see a Savior who is mighty, who has come in to rout our enemies. And sometimes, sometimes when we don't have a Savior, sometimes when Jesus doesn't come into our lives to rout our enemies, to heal our sicknesses, to destroy the evil in our lives, even we as Christians will ask the question, where is the Savior? Where is He? Why isn't He fixing this for me? And perhaps some of you have recently asked this question, where is the Savior? Why me, Lord? Where are you? Why am I going through this? Haven't I been a good Christian? Haven't I gone to church on a regular basis? Haven't I done the good things in life? Why? Why me? Now, I don't know if any of you are asking that question right now. But I imagine even if you aren't right now, you probably have before. You've probably wondered, where is the Savior in this? 
Why isn't God fixing this? Why can't I see my Savior? You've gone through the burdens day after day. Those things that trouble you. You've gone to bed at night thinking about them. You've woken up in the morning thinking about them. As you stand in the shower getting ready for your day, you think about them. They just hammer away in your head every spare moment. And sometimes when we don't see the Savior, sometimes we turn to other answers. We turn to other places to find these answers. Our society offers us a whole smorgasbord of answers. Our society offers us a number of ways to fix the problems of our life. Or at least ways to deal with them. Some people, they turn to food. When they start to get stressed, when they start to get concerned, when they start to have those burdens come, they start to eat. And they eat and eat until they forget about what's bothering them. Some people lash out in anger. They don't want to have to deal with their pain alone. It's not that they're angry with their friends or family, but they turn, lash out in anger in order, in order to not be in that pain alone. Some people, they turn to exercise. They run and they run. They lift weights until all they can think about is the soreness of their muscles. Some people, the answer is alcohol. Maybe not a lot. Maybe just a couple of drinks at the end of the day. Enough to take the edge off. Some people will turn to drugs. I'm not saying the illicit ones, but those that we get over the counter. Painkillers that are given to us for various bodily aches. Maybe we take one or two extra ones in order to control the pain in our heart. Some people turn to sex. Extramarital affairs, pornography. Just to create a fantasy to separate them from this world. And as people turn to these things, they're looking for answers. They're looking for solutions. The world offers them promises. Promises to ease the pain. Promises to show them something besides this day-to-day life that we live in. Sad thing is the world. The promises are broken. The fixes don't repair anything, but usually make the problems worse. I don't think anybody starts out addicted to a substance or to a thing. 